All right, Caitlin Clark. Here's my question about Caitlin Clark. Ask away. What? I like Caitlin Clark. She's wonderful. Well, and I like that game last night. That game, there was some, I was asked, I was thinking about it when you were talking about the game and how everybody tuned in. It's 12 million viewers and mm-hmm. everything, and we were liking it here. Yep. What was it that we liked? And to me, it was the pace. Like, I, I, I mean, we've talked about this a million times, but yeah. it's taken me a while to warm up to watching women's basketball. Yeah. And can we be honest about something about the game of women's basketball honest. even today? Yeah, I think there needs to be some honesty here. I, I enjoy watching uh, college women's basketball. I do. <laughs> Uh, I think it's gotten a lot better. Um, I think some of the uh, the skill is is incredible, and watching him shoot, it's still really unathletic. It just is. And, well, it's and, unathletic, but it's also, I mean, the men's game is athletic, but ugly in its own way. Yeah, but like because we, of turnovers, and, it is so frantic. Like we were joking, me and Buck were were talking yesterday. They were playing so hard and so. Like you said, the pace was was it was oh, reckless. It was great. It and at times it, it it looks like you're watching like a middle school basketball game because like, look, there's a lot of awkward layups. No one really elevates, so sometimes you're just like the layups and even like the shots in the paint are just turn and huck it like at the. But backboard. then you have Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is a different animal, and you know, and, and she's pulling up Steph. And Curry it was style. really fun to watch. Yes, yeah, she is is really fun, and, and the the length and athleticism of of, of LSU. But like at times, like we just need to be honest. Well, it is like it, it is not like this this uber athletic that is caught up to the men's game. I just think that people one the game has gotten significantly better, and I think we've learned to appreciate women's basketball in its own right. And and and, and for a lot of us, hopefully, we've stopped comparing it to the men's game because it doesn't look like the men's game. It's never going to look like the men's game, and it doesn't mean that it's lesser than. In fact, last night proved that with all the storylines and and Caitlin Clark. More people watch that well, than are you, watching anything that the men are doing. If you watch men's and women's tennis, they're two different games. Men's yes. more power game, women's more finesse game. Yeah. But both are really enjoyable. Yes. And I think that women's basketball is kind of getting to that point with with men's. It's just different. It's you're right. Of course, it's not going to be as athletic. I still find it. But, I still find the layups to be awkward and and some of the shots to be like. Ew. But I think it's. I thought last night's game was really fun to watch. Yes. Now, again, I'm not saying it was the greatest played game ever but look at the men's game the men's games are a mess sometimes did you watch some of those tournament games oh yeah they're awful just because these guys can jump through the roof and they none of them can shoot and they turn it over all the time and it's just a it's a it's a it's an s show in its own way right they both are like that you gotta remember these are college kids it's a it's the college game it's not polished but the WNBA is like that too it's just well i see i don't watch a lot of WNBA. that that gets me to my next question about caitlin clark because I think that for women's basketball, people like Caitlin Clark move that that sp- the the sport forward by leaps and bounds. Couldn't agree more. Because of what we just saw last night, she got twelve million people yep. to tune in, and we can sit here and pick apart the game. But the reality is, the stars that is what does it. Yeah. So and, my and by the question, way, it wasn't just Caitlin Clark. That was Angel Caitlin Reese, Clark yeah. with Angel yeah. Reese in the rematch and LSU. And let's be honest. Whether you think it's fair or not, LSU and Kim Mulkey make a great villain. And dare I say, I thought Kim Mulkey was actually really delightful in the post game stuff last night. And I was like, damn it, I kind of liked her with that. But they played a great villain in a great juxtaposition with Caitlin Clark. And you can even throw in the the political stuff and the race war. And and did they, you know, they weren't there for the anthem and they were rapping and in, 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 in their pregame and hyping it up and and Ella or uh, you know, I was there doing some sort of 12 year old girl, like middle school stuff. It was magic bird. It was blue collar Boston versus the showy LA. That was like a, a, just a confluence of perfect storylines with great talent and a, and a game that's on the come up. And, and that's why you got 12 million. So my question about Caitlin Clark is now, does this buzz continue to the WNBA or does this fizzle? I think it fizzles. Is she different? If so, why is she different? So I, I looked it up. The most watched WNBA game of all time was Brittany Griner's return from uh, Russia. Russia. You, you want to take a guess? Oh my god. 500,000? Million. Okay. Peaked at 1.3, averaged 800 and like 90,000. So 
and this is what I said about about like all the whether it's it's Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese or any of these. These are giant stars right now, and the college game. I think the college game right now is better and bigger than the WNBA. I don't think it's close. And when Caitlin, Caitlin Clark will still be a big deal, just like Sabrina Unescu is a big deal and she has her own shoe at Nike and, and you know, you see some jerseys out there. I will be shocked if when Caitlin Clark gets to the NBA and she's playing in Indiana, if there'll be an uptick and there'll be some interest in her. But there's been great WNBA players that have come before. Some like Diana Taurasi and Brittany Griner and you know and a lot of really really um, uh, famous people from the 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 and Don Staley by the way you know won Candace Olympic Parker. gold medals and Candace Parker Cheryl Miller yeah I mean and and some of these uh, the Candace Parker beautiful girls that go on and you know and they model and they're they're who is the uh, the the big blonde girl that was the MVP a couple times Elena Deladon yes big deal and you see her on on billboards and stuff but there's a limit. And I think for whatever reason, college basketball and the storylines and the university angle and that they fact they stick around for a couple of years, I think it's building something. But I don't I don't think that this translates. You will not get five million people that watch Caitlin Clark's debut in the WNBA. You just won't. I think this is a unique thing that's happening. And in, she's going in, to Indiana. She's right? going to go to Indiana. Yeah, no one cares about Indiana. And she'll be women's a, team. And, and she'll be a deal. So I think some of it has I don't to... think she'll be like this. I think it'll be massive locally and regionally for her, especially being that well, she'll be in Indiana, but But that's kind of college ball. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of this is it's it's a it's a marriage of stars who stand out and are really fun to watch, yeah. but they're on our college teams. Like yeah. that that matters because colleges I think you you were trying to allude to this by saying the university angle, I yes. think is what you meant. Yes. That that connection that we have with our universities is why she is part of why she matters. Yes. Now, if she's doing the same thing in the WNBA on the Indiana Fever. Fever, I don't know how many people care because they don't have that connection yeah. to the Indiana Fever. Whereas at Iowa, they have a huge fan base and and then, you know, all of our teams that we're fans of if you play Iowa or you know you just you follow yeah. other colleges because you're into it due to your yeah. college your connection and, and ESPN right we're, we're told like during the year hey this is a big matchup with South Carolina and LSU and, and it's like there's the kind of a, a there's just a built in awareness around it but in, in the WNBA and there's stars there's stars in college basketball and some of the coaches too you know Gino and Don Staley and Kim Mulkey name me a WNBA coach you know, it's like it's the, the Las Vegas Aces. Bill Lambeer. <laughs> is he still? Is he still? Becky in Detroit? Hammond, right? Becky Hammond. Yes, there's two. I think Becky was. I don't think she's still a coach in the WNBA. I, I thought, thought she was she, coaching in the NBA. I thought she went to be the head coach of the Aces. Did she? This is kind of my point <laughs> that <laughs> for, for whatever reason uh, uh, the, the interest falls off. I think Sabrina Unescu was a bigger star at Oregon than she is in the WNBA, and she plays in New York. By the way, it's a big freaking town. Last time I checked. And we'll see if Caitlin Clark Ooh. really can be the one that finally gets the WNBA to, I don't know, to, to become. She can't hurt. Put she it can't way. hurt. This this is the this is a star, but we we've, we've seen other stars in the game that have failed to make that jump. Well, it's the so, league. So did exactly. So is she standing on the shoulders of them, and is she the one that finally gets it over the hump, or does she become another one where? Yeah. She's a big deal. But then she gets to the WNBA, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, I remember Caitlin Clark. Boy, that was really fun, and now we've moved on to Juju. I feel like it's the latter. That's kind of my thing, but, I, we'll, but we'll see. I the think, one thing I think where it could be a little bit different is I think she has a little bit of that Steph Curry effect and that she's she's not like – I mean, obviously she's a very athletic woman, but she's not like this super freak athlete to the point where – she looks like any other girl and she, and like any, I think Steph inspired a whole generation of people who were like, I don't have to be huge and dunk to be a baller. I can play like this. Okay, well, Her style of game. 12 maybe. million people weren't tuning in to watch Steph. And I don't think 12 million yeah. people are going to tune in to watch, uh, no. yeah, I Caitlin just, Clark like right. in the WNBA. I feel so. like Caitlin Clark and it's the marriage of Caitlin Clark and the NCAA tournament yes. and that format and yes. our connection to our university. Yes. That's what it is. Because it's when she plays on in, her own in a league that very few people care about, yeah. I just I think she's going to get lost. When she plays in Indiana, the the her her the opener will be a big deal. Anyone want let's we can play some wagers cuz they're going to pump the hell out of that thing. 
Anyone want to place a wager? So the, the, the highest rated WNBA game of all time is a million people. A million. She just finished 12.3. Oh, I don't this. think it'll ever touch that. I'm just wondering no, if she could do more I, than what, what they've done before. I don't think she gets a million people, but maybe, we'll see. Maybe not. But, you know, and, and that's my, so that's game one. Let's say she even does two million. Game six, when she's playing the Detroit Shock or the whatever, you know. The well, big matchup with the Connecticut I think, Sun. I think what the WNBA would say is, hey, two million, we're growing. Yes. Yes, they you know, are. That's what. They're, they're growing. But I, I made the point yesterday, and I'll stand by it. I believe that the, the, the college game right now, especially for female athletes, this is the peak of their popularity and the peak of the brand that you can get right now. There is a moment in time with this NIL and the come up on women's sports and the fact that men's basketball is on the downside, right? There's a yin and yang to everything. And right now, men's basketball has never been less interesting and less popular. And the women are coming for them. And look out, because right now they're whooping your ass. Unfortunately, for for Caitlin Clark and for anyone else coming along, there's still this other league out there called the NBA. And I think you're going to have a really hard time convincing NBA fans to watch the WNBA and say that, that that's going to that's gonna be there. Because, by the way, 6 million people aren't tuning into a regular season NBA game. And you're telling me that they're going to tune into a WNBA game because Caitlin Clark's playing? I hope I'm wrong, but if I'm a betting man, I'm taking the that this is the the peak of that popularity. Bill Lambeer, not a WNBA head coach. Okay, he used to be. He's used not to be. anymore. Uh, Becky Hammond is. She is with the Las Vegas Aces. And another fun fact: WNBA head coach, a Blazer connection, Nate Tibbets. Really? Mm-hmm. Blazers assistant Nate Tibbets. He is now with the Phoenix Mercury. Is Michael Cooper still a coach? He was at one point. He was. Yeah. No. Yeah. Michael Cooper was a uh, was a coach. We he, have. He Tanisha, might have been a coach of the uh, the Sparks. We have Tanisha Wright, Teresa Weatherspoon, Stephanie White, Christy Sides, mm-hmm. Sandy. That's gonna be Caitlin Clark's new coach, by the way. Yeah. That Christy you're right. Sides. You're right. I boy, I gotta tell you, I think Buck might be sneaky WNBA fan. It's possible. He knows a lot. He's well, I even, just saw her name next to Indiana Fever, which you just mentioned. He's not even hashtag Girl Dad. That's right. Sandy Brondello. Mm. Eric Tybalt? Uh, you're losing me. You're oh, losing. I have more. You're Kurt losing. Miller. You're losing me fast. Cheryl Reeve, Nate Tibbetts, Becky Hammond, Noel Quinn, and Latricia Trammell. Those are your WNBA head coaches, Jace. Repeat cool. that back. No. Did no, you I just won't. go, cool? <laughs> cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. Uh, what was I going to tell you? Uh, I don't know. That's two times I've lost my train of thought today. You I, know, my new brand has just got me all riding high. Here's the other one, too, Sachi. that I'll ask the question. Well, I, I, we got a break. Real quick, so. just you answer it on the other side. Okay. Because I, I point yeah. out, as great as Caitlin Clark is, that $12 million was the perfect storm with the villain and Angel Reese and the race war and all that. Do If, if they win the title, so they got two more, right? That was just to get, that wasn't even the Final Four. That was to get to the Final Four. And that but UConn, that's a big deal. I don't know if her next two games come close to twelve million. 